Well, in my young years, I was fortunate to be the favorite of my lolo or my angkong because he is, I'm the first grandson of both sides, paternal and maternal. And I'm sort of a, a bit spoiled, especially with the, my maternal grandfather. And uh, he was quite rich. I should say he was the uh, pioneer of Philippine cosmetics. But when he came in, in 1938, as from my Hong Kong story, he came in empty-handed, worked hard, and had a good network, especially during the Japanese time. Uh, he told me the house was on top of the Japanese uh, barricade, the camp. So he befriended them by cooking food for them. So that's one of his way of, let's say, parang PR, so that he can continue his business. And at that time, he was doing pomade. So he was one of the few fortunate people or businessmen, I should say, that was able to continue the business even if there's war. And who are the better ones to back him up? It's the Japanese people, or the military, who was there to help him out. So from there, I learned some tricks that you do not fight the people, like the government. You work with the government and strike a deal with them, be fair. And I think that's one of the best way of wisdom that I learned from my uncle during my earlier years. After high school, I had to work, so I was, I was a working student. I studied at night and I worked in the daytime. And uh, some of the, there are lots of challenges, disappointments. One particular disappointment is that I wasn't able to continue my supposedly basketball career, which I love to do because I have to work. So I have to give it up. Uh, intentionally with a heavy heart because I need to survive so I need to work at day till 4 or 5 in the afternoon and go to school 6 to 9 in the evening in PSBA uh, unfortunately I was not able to finish my college but well it's it's a uh, probably I'm too busy with work and found uh, studying a bit boring so I decided to have more focus on working and in business. Well after my college days I went to a lot of other ventures like I sell t-shirt, promotional items and I felt so hard, so difficult so I decided to go back to the business which I know which was cosmetics, and, and fortunately, at that time, nail polish was the in thing. So I started with nail polish as my initial products to sell in the cosmetic line. After nail polish, I said to myself, nail polish alone is not too big, so I have to expand. So I expanded to eyeshadow, lipstick, compact powder, and so on and so forth. So. It was doing quite well, and uh, I remember the year 1986 when the Edsa Revolution happened. Because before Edsa Revolution, it was a, a bit chaotic because of the martial law thing. Marcos was being, uh, people wants to have a change, to have martial law out, Marcos out. So the government, government was very unstable. But I immediately felt, immediately feel the difference when the EDSA one revolution came in. There was a sudden surge of uh, confidence in our economy, and uh, and the good thing is that my foreign, my Taiwan uh, supplier or partner was able to extend some credit lines. So, very fortunately, the business grew three times in 1986. So I was able to expand further, and that was a start wherein I started hiring beauty consultants to man the stores. So that was the beginning, 
and uh, I was fortunately and la lucky or blessed to be at that time when the economy was starting to grow and I was able to grow with the economy, grow with the, our major uh, partners like SM, Robinson, uh, and Gaisanos. So that was the start of uh, growing together as a business and as with the country's economy. Well, in 1986, when I was starting to be heavily engaged into department store business, I remember there are more than 40 brands in the market and uh, only a couple of local brands. Uh, I see the problem there is that the prices of these foreign branded cosmetics are too high for the locals. So I said to myself, I need to do something to help our uh, country, especially our pretty Filipinas, to enjoy this luxury makeup. So I was able to look for good suppliers, major partners, who were able to help us out and transform with me on our goal to have these uh, expensive cosmetics into affordable ones but of global uh, quality. So that was a start. It was a big uh, homework for me. I have to travel a lot to Europe at that time, uh, Italy, Germany, France for supplies. And uh, fortunately, I was able to meet some good partners who are also supplying to these branded cosmetics. So that was a start. And then I always made to a point that my product should be sold at 50% of the minimum wage. So if our minimum wage today is like 500, then my SRP should be 250 and below. So that's the trick to be successful. So somehow, somewhere, I was able to, to make it uh, like that for many years. Uh, at that time in the 80s where Taiwan was the, like the mini factory of the world till late 1900s. Then when early 2000 came in, things shifted to China. So I still remember when I shifted to China, my competitors tell, was telling to a lot of people, Ever Belena will shut down because they, go to, they went to China. Because China at the time was known to produce fake, bad products. But I found out there are so many factories in China, you just need to search for the good ones. And I was good and blessed to know a couple of companies who were able to help us out. Initially, I helped them on, their, uh, on how to produce quality products. Then eventually, they were able to export to Europe and the US. In return, I learned from them because they were able to, to produce better quality than what I told them to be. So it was a mutual benefit that helping one another become a very successful uh, partnership with all my Chinese suppliers. Well, I'm honored to be dubbed by you as the father of Philippine Cosmetics. Probably it's an uh, inspiration on my part to help our Filipino consumers to be pretty. And I, des I think they deserve something, uh, some products to make them pretty at a very affordable price, global quality. And I was able to do that all these years. And that's one of the things that I want to uh, uh, to share to my to my next gen who will next run the company that you should make it global quality affordable price remember at 50 percent max at the of the cost of the minimum wage then if you continue to do that you will always be successful because I I feel a Filipina consumer can always share half of her daily wage to buy a pretty product to make her feel good feel good so that's a secret of uh of let's say to have a good 
uh, quality product that can last for a long time. I was lucky because my uncle died when I was 11 and before he died on an accident, accidental accident in our factory, he was able to give me some lessons in life even when I was 8, 9, 10 years old and I was able to absorb some of his wisdom and up to today I still uh, practice them and it's really working the man for that's why I think it's one of the uh, few uh, advantages I had to become I should say a successful businessman today today it's a different uh, age I, I I, I hope that the next gen young guys, the millennials, will be like our generation wherein we work hard. We don't have such thing as entitlement. And that's what I see in today's kids. Everybody felt like they should be entitled. I believe you should work hard and the entitlement will come in after you work hard, but not entitlement first before you work hard. But because once you're entitled, you won't work anymore because you will feel that everything is so easy. Well, I believe in hard work, uh, inspiration, perspiration. I don't believe that there's luck or lucky in life. Well, I term luck or lucky as blessings and blessings will come through hard work. Of course, if you don't, if you don't plant, if you don't cultivate, there's no harvest. So once you start in life, there should be hardship, struggles, challenges. And eventually, the good things in life will come, blessings, which some people term it as luck. And well, I don't think it's really luck. It's really hard work, then blessings will come. I think Everbilena is a product of hard work. I think the, the brand in itself is already a legacy that I hope can stay for another 35 years. Today we just celebrated our 35th year. I hope there will be another 35 years with my daughter running it. So I believe Everbilena will be a legacy for our people. It's a local brand, local inputs. It's all Filipino, but you, it's all Filipino ideas in this product line. So. And uh, also, you work hard, nothing is impossible. Don't be discouraged and also put God in the center of everything, then you'll be all right.